Now to Russia, which holds elections in March. It does seem inevitable that uh, President Putin will be re-elected for a fifth term, but he may face a challenge. Uh, the Liberal uh, Boris Nadezhdin has submitted the 100,000 signatures that needed to register as a candidate. The anti-war campaigner is confident that he'll be able to make his case for peace. Boxes and boxes of signatures declaring their support for this man, Boris Nadezhdin. He's a rare anti-war voice in Vladimir Putin's Russia. After formally submitting his candidacy to the election authorities, he made clear again what his campaign is all about. Two months ago, I wrote the text titled Nadezhdin's Manifesto. It starts literally like this. I am joining the election as an outspoken opponent of the incumbent president's policy. Putin has committed a fatal error when he started the special military operation. This is what is written there. There is the answer. It's a message that's clearly resonated with the thousands of people across Russia who have braved freezing temperatures to register their support for Nadezhdin. I am a mother and have three children. The war is terrible. It just has to stop. As quickly as possible. I support everyone else. I'd even vote for a bald devil as long as something changes. Political analyst Dmitry Oreshkin says that Nadezhdin's potential to mobilize voters could be dangerous for the Kremlin. There is no doubt he could collect 10 or 15 percent of the vote. In no way will he become president or even be serious opposition for Putin. But this will be extremely inconvenient for the Kremlin, because it undermines the idea of the cohesion of the entire Russian people, who shoulder to shoulder defend their homeland from the aggression of Ukraine, NATO, and so on. Nadezhdin also has the support of well-known opposition figures, like Mikhail Khodorkovsky and the wife of Alexei Navalny, as well as Ekaterina Donsova, who herself wanted to run for president but was blocked by the Central Election Committee. Whether Nadezhdin will be prevented from running as well remains uncertain, but the groundswell of support behind him clearly demonstrates Russians' appetite for change. Well, let's uh, look at this with uh, DW's uh, Russia analyst, uh, Konstantin Egert. Uh, welcome to the studio, Konstantin. Thank you. So, 100,000 um, uh, signatures uh, are backing him up. Uh, does uh, Boris Nadezhdin actually stand any chance against Vladimir Putin? Well, we should rephrase it. I don't think that anyone has any chance but Vladimir Putin, because uh, according to well, the consensus among most independent analysts, including Russians, is that this is, since quite a long time, presidential elections in Russia are a completely staged, managed project. And Mr. Nadezhdin is there just to imitate uh, the fact that there are elections in Russia. But in fact, whatever the Putin's administration, presidential administration, is going to decide, that's going to be the law of the land. And in a sense, of course, Nadezhdin doesn't have a chance, and he knows it because no one has any chance but Vladimir Putin. OK, but there, there are two things in what you said. One, the idea that, that, that this election is stage-managed, and the second is the idea that uh, Nadezhdin is actually Putin's man in disguise. Is, is that what you're suggesting? Well, I'm suggesting that this is someone who's been in Russian politics for a quarter of a century. I do know Boris Nadezhdin. He's not a bad man. He never was an historical sort of fan of Vladimir Putin, but he was always in the orbit of the Kremlin. He used to be working for uh, Mr. Kirienko, Sergei Kirienko, who is now chief of domestic policy for Putin's administration, who is managing these elections. It's not a coincidence, in my view. Mr. Nadezhdin is there to, on the one hand, show to the Russians and to the world that, yes, Putin recognizes there are people that don't like him, don't like him, don't like the war even. But on the other hand, uh, the elections are so tightly controlled that... I think even if they let him run, which is not at all a given, then the result will be a meager 2-3%, and mm. then the Kremlin will say, look, 
Putin is very popular. All those who are against the war and against him, that's only 2% of the population is negligible. OK, so you may well have answered my, my next question, which was, why is he uh, standing, given that so many opposition um, uh, voices in Russia end up jail or having mysterious falls from balconies? Yes, exactly. That's... The, you, you should think that maybe he's a very brave man, but to the, what we know about him and what we know actually about the fact that he's been allowed to collect signatures across Russia, that's very significant because other people who wanted to be... who wanted to run, they were not even allowed to start right. signature collecting. Uh, that he's been allowed to do that shows that the authorities look at him benignly, but we'll see whether he's going to be registered because the current, in the current state of the Kremlin, they don't like surprises. And if you let someone who at least says that he's against the war appear on television and be a candidate, that may produce unpleasant surprises. And I think people in the Kremlin are not great risk takers, risk -takers right. today. And does he have a, a, an actual platform beyond uh, opposing the war in Ukraine? Well, he opposes it fairly mildly. He says, we need to start talks with Ukraine. Well, frankly, if you ask Putin, probably he also wants talks with Ukraine on his conditions. Otherwise, he says, well, we should reconnect to the West, we should pay more attention to economic development. But it's a very sketchy programme. Right. If you look at his website, it's not very detailed, let's put it like that. OK, thank you for talking us through that, uh, Konstantin. Uh, DW's at Russia analyst, Konstantin Eggert. Thank you. Angela Stent is director of the Centre for Eurasian, Russian and East European Studies at Georgetown University. She's also senior fellow at the Brookings Institution. Her latest book is Putin's World, uh, Russia Against the West and With the Rest. Uh, welcome to DW. Um, Boris Nadezhdin, uh, not officially on the ballot yet. Uh, is the Central Election uh, Committee uh, likely to let him stand? So I'm dubious about that. I mean, the Kremlin... Uh, wants Putin to get 80% this time in the election to show that he's a successful war leader. And they always let a few candidates run against him so that it looks as if it's a competitive election. Um, and I think they allowed Boris Nadezhdin to collect the signatures because this is a safety valve for a lot of Russians who do oppose the war, and they can feel that they're doing something to change things in Russia. Um, it's also a way, by the way, for the Kremlin to know who opposes the war because they'll look at all the signatures. But I think if the Kremlin thinks that uh, Mr. Nadezhdin may really um, get more than two or three percent, I don't think that they will allow him on the ballot. But we'll know in a few weeks. Right. And you, you, you mentioned that the, the Kremlin is looking for an 80 percent uh, result. Where did, where did that figure come from? Um, I think, you know, there are people who sit around in the Kremlin. It's not an official figure, but it's what the people who know what's going on say they want, um, uh, just because, again, that will legitimise what he's doing in their eyes um, and show that he's a successful war leader. Um, so we might, we in the West might think, well, you know, 70% wouldn't be bad either, but they really want to, they want a higher uh, numbers uh, than they did at the, in the last election before the war. And are we convinced that Boris Nadezhdin is a real opposition candidate? Because it has been suggested that he's actually a Putin a puppet who's been uh, allowed, who, uh, whose job it is to give the appearance uh, of, an, uh, of choice in this election. Right. So this is always a tricky question. I mean, if you look at his past, he served in the Duma, the Russian parliament, from 1999 to 2003. He has worked for opposition candidates before, but he has also worked with, for instance, uh, Sergei Kirienko, who is now in charge of the Russian occupied territories in Ukraine. Uh, and he has also, despite his opposition to the war, said that Crimea is Russian and should never go back to Ukraine. And there are those who believe that um, he, he's not a genuine genuinely independent candidate. Uh, on the other hand, the Kremlin has also criticised him in the last few weeks for his own criticism of the war. So I cannot give you a definitive answer on that, um, but it, it does seem uh, that he genuinely opposes the war, uh, and that's why he's running. OK, so the Kremlin says a useful safety valve for people to let off steam. Um, Mr Nadezhdin presumably knows he's going to lose. So what does he hope to gain out of uh, standing up there as a, an opponent of uh, Mr Putin, whose opponents tend to up in jail, uh, end up in jail or falling out of balconies? 
Yeah, I mean, he's raised his own profile. And if he genuinely does oppose the war, I think he's doing this also because he wants to let people give voice to this. A lot of the people who signed these petitions are young. Um, and I think, you know, he would hope to encourage people to continue opposing the war, even though clearly he's not going to become president. Right. So um, beyond the war, does he have a platform? So his main platform is to end the to end the war, to change the government, to have a different person in the Kremlin. But also, he said he wants to normalize relations with the West. Um, he wants to give more freedom to people domestically. So on the face of it, it certainly sounds like a more sort of liberal and pro democratic program. Again, with the proviso that there are also nationalist undertones to it, if you think about Crimea. OK, thank you for that. Uh, very clear. Angela Stent from Georgetown University and the Brookings Institution.